So my name's uh, Nick Askew. I run a social enterprise based here in Cambridge called Conservation Careers. And I've only got eight minutes, so I'm going to go relatively quickly. But I'm here to kind of provide general careers advice to you as potential conservationists of the future. Um, I recently ran a poll of 146 conservationists from around the world asking them what careers advice would they give to people like you. So I've got my own advice I'd like to give, but I've collated this from all those people. They've got 1,700 years of experience between them. So hopefully the top 10 tips I'm about to give you have some kind of weight behind them, if you like. Well, the first thing is you're not going to get rich, unfortunately, working in nature. And I think it's worth highlighting that at the beginning. It's not to put you off at all. You won't be on the breadline but you will tend to watch your family and friends earn more money than you through their careers as you kind of have the happiness that you're working to save the world, but you're not necessarily making a fortune in the process of doing so. So the most important thing is to really be passionate about nature conservation. Now, people talk about that, but it's true. You're going to potentially work quite hard, long hours. You're not going to have a great support mechanism around you, particularly if you're in a charity or an NGO, and you're not going to be massively well paid either. So you've really got to be in it because you want to do this job and you believe in that. So... That's the first rule. The second tip uh, that we collated is really to get familiar with the jobs that are available out there. 30, 40 years ago, nature conservation wasn't really a well-trodden career path, if you like, but today it's a professional industry. Uh, there's loads of different types of jobs that are available, and it's expanding and diversifying all the time. So I think one of the first steps, if you're serious about it, is to go and look at job boards like mine but like others that are out there too and understand the types of roles that are available out there that you can do. There's some that are listed up there and you're going to hear lots this evening from the other panel members too. So figure out what it is you'd like to do first uh, before you go any further. The third thing is, and I think this goes for whatever career path you take but it's more centred to conservation than any other I would think, is that you've got to make things happen for yourself really, you've got to create opportunities. Now people used to talk about networking and I think that's still kind of an important word that people use but really what that means nowadays is getting out there and promoting yourself a little bit, share your passion for nature. So what does that mean? Well it means you might want to start blogs if you want to actually promote yourself and what you're interested in and what you're doing to build awareness about you and, and what it is you're interested in. I've put here, say yes. You know, if people offer you something, you know, a conservation organisation wants some help or support, say yes, get involved. And also go out and ask for help. Ask for introductions. If you, yourself, family, friends, whatever, know someone that works in conservation, well, say, would you mind if I go and have a cup of tea with them or coffee? You know, make things happen for yourself because people aren't going to make it happen for you. You need to kind of create opportunities. So it does need a little bit of drive, but it does work if you kind of stick at it. Number four is passion isn't enough on its own. You do need experience. And we just heard about volunteering and internships and those sorts of things. Now, it's incredibly competitive conservation. Again, in the survey, 92% of conservationists think it's got more competitive over the last decade. So it is getting harder to get in. The good news is there's more jobs available than ever before, too, because lots of the organisations are getting bigger and bigger as we're getting better at fundraising and marketing and things like that. So to get in, you really need some good experience on your CV. You need to show you're not just passionate, you've done stuff. That means volunteering. It's great. I mean, if you've got bursaries available, take it. Use your free time wisely. So if you can join a conservation volunteer group, myself and Jenny met at the York University Conservation Volunteer Group and we're still in conservation, so it does work. And also, you know, use your holidays wisely. If, again, if you're passionate about conservation, this should be real fun time for you. This isn't a chore. This is what you want to do. So go out and enjoy it and get as much experience as you can. Halfway through, number five, get educated but don't stop learning. Conservationists are a clever bunch actually. In the survey, 19% have PhDs, 42% have masters postgraduate type level, 34% got to undergraduate degree level and 6% left at school level. So basically, an undergraduate is almost a minimum nowadays for conservation and lots go on to masters too. That's not saying that you need a masters. It depends on the type of job that you're looking to do. Really, it boils down to what is it you're interested in. Let's say you want to get into communications and marketing. You're passionate about talking about conservation and motivating others. Go and look at, at job descriptions and see what the sort of minimum requirements are. And if it says master's, then that might be something you need to work towards. Not everyone needs a master's in this world, though. If you want to do science and research, then obviously a PhD or a doctorate is also useful. So it depends what you want to do. But on average, these guys are a clever bunch and you're competing against them. But you're at Cambridge Uni, so you've got a damn good start. I said don't stop learning. It doesn't stop here. I mean, things like TED Talks nowadays are great just for keeping your knowledge up to speed. Joining professional associations if you have the opportunity, that's also useful stuff as well. It's good for your CV, but it's good just for your own personal knowledge and development too. 
be a professional, uh, soft skills matters. So I guess another word is like transferable skills. Nowadays, because the standard is so high, conservation organisations are looking for people who are not just committed, passionate conservationists with good experience and all that. They want people who are going to turn up on time, you know, manage their inbox really effectively, be good communicators, be a good team player. And it's the sorts of skills that whatever job you go into are going to be really good for you in life. So become as professional as you can be because that's what most conservationists are kind of like nowadays. Certainly the younger conservationists that you see coming through are really on the button. So, you know, you've got to be as professional as you can be and really work or at least be aware that softer skills do matter nowadays. Number seven, so you've found a job, you've got your experience, you've put your application in. You've now got to get past the recruitment person, the HR manager of the conservation organisation. And you've got to, as we say here, you know, keep your applications out of the HR bin. You can often be competing against tens or possibly hundreds sometimes of other applications. Don't be scared by that number. Usually it's you know, a few dozen. I think it's easy to get yourself in the top 25% just by putting in a good application, actually. And this is all about doing as best an application as you can. First thing is one application, one CV or cover letter does not fit all. Don't just fire it out. Careers advisors, I'm sure, will tell you this. You've got to bespoke it to the job that's available. So look at the sorts of things they're looking for, the evidence they're looking for, and make sure that your application is as closely aligned to what they're looking for as possible. Look at the content of the CV. Talk about what you've done in your experience really clearly, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. And then make sure you get checked. You'd be amazed how many applications just go straight in the bin because of spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. So just get another pair of eyes to check that application. You know, maybe even ask the career service for some advice too. You've put all the hard work in, now you've just got to tell someone about it and get that interview. Last three then, really quickly. Become a star at interviews. What does star mean? Well, interviews are obviously where you're going to get your job. You're in the room because you've done all the right things. You now just need to convince them you're a nice real person and the, the, the stuff that's on your CV, you know, really happened. You can kind of elaborate on that. STAR is Situation, Task, Action, Response. It's a bit of an acronym, but it just means I worked in the York University Conservation Volunteers. That was the situation. My task was to conserve wildlife. I did that through going around nature reserves and coppicing hedges, things like that. And the reaction was wildlife came back because the hedgerows grew. It's a useful structure to actually portray your experiences. And it's worth just picking out your top three experiences you want to talk about and using that sort of method to actually convey what it is you want to do. And in interviews, do relax as well. If you want to travel, conservation is international nowadays. If you have a language behind you, that can really give you the competitive edge. French and Spanish are very useful languages to have, actually. So just make you aware of that. And finally, the good news is, the first job is actually the hardest job to get. And once you get that job, and if you really want to, you will get it, um, it does get easier because once you've got the job, then you have control and you can decide what job you want to go to next and you can decide what it is that you want to work on and towards. So once you've got money in the bank, you've been paid every month, the pressure's off and you can start to actually move around much more. Safe in the knowledge you've been paid really to get experience. So, so that's that. It's a bit whistle-stop. I apologise for the speed. So if you want more, you can go to the website, the top 10's on the front page, so you can get it there.